Hello everyone. Today we will discuss about the centrifuge. When a particle moves on a circular path with uniform speed, then its direction changes at every point on the circumference of the circle. Or we can say that the velocity of the particle changes at every point on the circle. In this condition, we can say that here acts an acceleration on the particle towards the center of the circle and it is perpendicular to the direction of the velocity. So this type of acceleration is called as the centripetal acceleration. It is also important to note that the centripetal acceleration does not produce any change in the magnitude of the velocity or it means that the magnitude of the velocity v1 and the magnitude of the velocity v2 are same here you can see that the particle is moving on the circumference of a circle with uniform speed and let us say at point p1 its velocity is v1 and at point v2 its velocity is v2 when the particle moves from p1 to p2 let us say that it travels a linear distance delta s and the angular displacement is delta t now let us consider the particle is moving on the circular path with uniform speed v the velocity vector will be tangential at every point on the circular path here you can see that the velocity vector v1 and the velocity vector v2 when the particle is at point p1 the velocity vector v1 is tangential to it when the particle is at point p2 the velocity vector v2 is tangential to it and let us say that when the particle travel from p1 to p2 it takes a time interval delta t and it travels a linear distance delta s and let us say the angular displacement is delta theta as you know that the particle is moving with uniform speed so we can say that the magnitude of v1 is equal to v2 is equal to t but in direction let us say that the difference is delta theta now we represent the velocity v1 and v2 by a triangle which is called as the velocity triangle the side qa represent the velocity vector v1 and the side qb represent the velocity vector v2 here it is important to note that the magnitude of v1 vector is equal to v and the magnitude of the vector v2 is also equal to v or we can say that qa is equal to qb when we find the change in the velocity of the particle then we can find delta v as vector v2 minus vector v1 because arrow is towards the uh, qb side so delta v will be equal to v2 vector minus vector v1 so here we can write delta v as equal to v2 vector minus v1 vector now if you see here the triangle o p1 and p2 and the triangle q a these two triangles are identical triangles because in triangle op1 p2 you know that op1 is equal to op2 these are the radius of the circle and are equal to r and the angle between op1 and op2 is equal to delta c similarly in this vector triangle the side QA is equal to QB and in terms of the magnitude 
these are written as equal to p and the angle between the side q a and q b is delta theta so here the two side q a and q b are equal angle between them is delta theta similarly here op1 is equal to op2 and the angle between them is delta theta so we can say that these two triangles are the identical triangles so when these two triangles are identical then we can write as p1 p2 upon p1 o is equal to a b upon q a let us say that p1 p2 is equal to delta s and p1 o is equal to r and let us say a b is equal to delta v which represents the change in velocity and q a is equal to v here we can find the change in velocity in terms of the magnitude as equal to v upon r into delta s let us say it is equation number one now if we divide this equation by delta t then delta v upon delta t is equal to v upon r delta s upon delta t let us say that delta t when a particle travel from p1 to p2 it takes a time into a delta t and it is very less then we can write earlier equation as mean delta t tends to zero delta v upon delta t equal to v upon r mean delta t tends to zero delta s upon delta t delta v upon delta t it is a change in velocity and when delta t is very small then it is called as the instantaneous acceleration so we can write it as equal to a then v upon r as it is and limit delta t tends to zero delta s upon delta t it is distance upon time so it will be velocity so v upon r into v or we can write as a is equal to v square upon r but we also know that v is equal to r omega so when we write v equal to r omega then a is equal to r omega square here the acceleration can be written in terms of the magnitude as a is equal to r omega square and the direction because acceleration is a vector quantity and its direction will be same as the velocity delta v vector further it is also important to note that when delta t is very small then you know that here when your delta t is small then your delta theta will be also very small then we can say that the change in the velocity delta v will be perpendicular to the velocity v1 or we can say that acceleration will be perpendicular to the velocity vector and it will be directed towards the center of the circle and that is why it is called as the centripetal acceleration thank you